Hey guys, so I've already made one of these before, but I want to see if I can make another one. Um, mostly for fun, but also because someone had contacted me and requested that uh, I make them one, because apparently they were having some... They are having a hard time getting a hold of anyone who normally makes these things. But, I don't know. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and try and make a flash cart. Uh, I have one of these on hand. I never got this one working, so I never bothered cleaning up the uh, flux. But I was just going through my carts here. This, I'm not going to be touching. I actually like this game and want to play it. Uh, I just have it on my desk here because I just ripped it. This is a 4 megabyte Game Boy Color game, which is somewhat uncommon, but I'll come back to that later. Um, but this I'm going to be using, and this Pokemon Crystal in here. Uh, now, the game itself, as you can see, it does work just fine. It boots up. It does hold a save. Focus. Fuck. As you can see, there's save data in there, and the clock is working. I did just start it like three minutes ago, so it's, I mean, it's not going that far, going that fast. Uh, but it still does need a battery. It does hold a save, so if I shut it off, it'll wipe but, uh, or I'm sorry, it does not hold a save because the battery's dead. But if you do a soft reset, you can test that the SRAM's working. The reason I was testing the SRAM in the first place is because for some reason my cart reader's not recognizing it. But it seems to work, so I'm not too concerned. Um, I bought this cart originally to make a flash cart, but I kind of gave up because uh, the shell itself is damaged. I didn't really want to mess with that, and because the Pokemon Crystal Japanese variant has this cool sigil on the back, uh, because it has the unique placement of the screws, I can't really get another case for this without just buying another Japanese crystal. And, uh, well, at that point, why even bother messing with it, you know? Uh, but, but, let's see if we can't make a flash card. Oh, no, that's not what I thought it was. Never mind. We're just going to make the one. Ignore that whole 4 megabyte thing. I don't have the right adapter. Well, I do have the right adapter, but I'm not going to bother with this cart. I'll do it. No. I'll save it for another time. Okay. So we're just going to do this one. I need to... <clears throat> I need to desolder this battery before I can even start doing anything with it. Come on. But to play it safe... I'm going to use some Kapton tape here to insulate some components because I need to desolder this chip. And this isn't going to protect anything from heat, but what it will do is if they get too hot and start coming off, the tape will hold them down. So it'll prevent these things from getting desoldered. Well, most of them. But it should be good enough. The little things that'll protect from heat enough that it won't be a problem, and the big things that'll hold down. Cool. The heat gun. Headphone user's warning. Don't get loud.
I usually tape this to a uh, metal plate. Definitely should have done that this time. I'm going to have to heat this up again and uh, flatten it out. These boards, for whatever reason, they warp when you heat them up. I've only noticed it on these Japanese crystal versions, though. I haven't noticed any of the green, normal green PCBs warping. I'll give that a sec to cool down, clean up some of this flux in the meantime. Okay. So to make these flash carts, the biggest thing you need, of course, is a donor cart. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Japanese Pokemon Crystal game. I like the... Uh, it's still hot, but whatever. Not too hot. I like the uh, pattern on the back. I think it looks pretty cool. But... Beyond that, you need one of these. You need to desolder that battery when you hit this with heat, otherwise it'll explode, and that's bad. You also need one of these adapters here. You can get these from Jay Rodrigo. He sells them directly, or you can pick them up on Osh Park. Um, and then after that, you need one of these guys. This is an AM29FO16B chip. Supposedly the AM29 FO32 chips work, but I don't really, I haven't had very much luck getting those to work on the MBC3 carts. Granted, I haven't really tried, but I've been told they don't work, and yeah. Okay. So this gets soldered on with the, uh, the dot on the top right here. Because of this capacitor here on this particular cart, I need to file this down a little bit just so it fits a little bit better. When you get these from Osh Park, you need to file them anyway. Because of how they panelize their PCBs. But, uh, oh, by the way, this is what the uh, After Dark variant of this adapter looks like. I can't help myself. I keep getting them. It looks really cool, but you won't even see anything once it's all soldered in. Okay, that still doesn't fit. The alternative to filing this down is to just desolder that capacitor and move it. But, this is easier. So close. If I start seeing copper, though, I'll know I've gone too far. Okay. There we go. Good enough. All right. So... We need to smooth that out. That didn't work at all, so we need some flex. There we go. Now we can solder this down. So you want to make sure you get this nice and centered. Otherwise you'll solder one side down and then go, oh shit, I can't get to the other side. You also want to make sure it's lined up because once you start soldering it, you won't be able to move it. I think we're good. Of course, I just got flux all over my fingers, which is wonderful. I'm going to 
Let's put a blob of solder there. And a blob of solder here. Let's see if I can't make my way the whole line. Nice, nice. Looks good. And that looks good. All right. So next, let's solder down this guy. This is, of course, pre flashed. So it should work when I get it attached here. I'm going to put some flux down because I know I'm going to need it. Even though I just got it all over the uh, pins there, I'm going to have to clean it up. All right, so this dot in the top right corner, top right corner, or left, I'm sorry. I swear I know my left from my right. All right. And then, is this the right chip? Is it missing pins? I think my chip is missing pins. That's not, that might not be good. Might not be bad, but. I am concerned by this. I thought we just had to center it. Here, I don't know how well you can see this. I don't know, maybe pause it and zoom in something but it looks like there's extra pins or something which I know there are unused pins like if we compare the FO oops, FO32 to the FO16 we can see that the chip is bigger or smaller rather there should be two extra pins but I didn't think my chip was missing pins. Yeah, maybe I'll just center it and see what happens. I can always desolder it. Uh, of course it moved, damn it. That's soldered down. Hope that's right. Now we need itty bitty wire. I will use blue because I like blue. 
And that needs to go from here to right about there. Sorry, forgot to turn the AC off. Okay. Now, let's see where this is supposed to get soldered. I've got here a cart I made a while back. Instead of Googling the instructions, I'll just copy this one. Okay, so there's this cluster of four. Goes on the left one. Cluster of four little vias. that's that we're all done except for the battery and I gotta clean this thing up because it's all sticky but uh I'll do that in just a sec here first I want to see if it works so I need back half the shell and if all went well it should boot into Pokemon Prism and it does not Double check it's not my cartwheel. Oh, maybe it was. Interesting. Ha ha ha! So, I think the intro in this game takes absolutely forever, so we're not going to go through that going to assume it works. Um, all I have to do now is solder on a battery, but I do got to clean this thing up, and I'm going to clean it up before I do that. So, uh, I'll be back. Alright guys, we're in the final stretch. Uh, while I was away, I went ahead and cleaned up this cart. Um, got all the flux off, just give it a quick bath and isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush. I still don't have a battery in there, but I did uh, reflash the game to the ROM that the person who requested this cart requested, and I have no idea what what's different about this ROM hack. This is uh, Crystal Kaizo or whatever, um, but I did start a new game, soft reset, and it seems to be holding a save, so I think we're good to go ahead and add a battery into this bad boy. Uh, but yeah, like I said, to clean it up so it's no longer sticky. Oh, and I just put it right down on top of that flux. That was, uh, damn it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll put it there and hopefully not do that again. Um, unfortunately, I do not have any Panasonic batteries. Uh, oh, good lord, I think I just doxed myself. I'm going to have to cut that out, but I do have one last battery. Pop that in there. Um, I think this battery is good. Let's find out. Yeah, can't see the meter, but it's at 
three point. Yeah, there we go. Plenty of charge. Don't move it into the flux. Okay. So to add a battery, it's nice and simple. Just add solder to the terminals. And I don't, I, I see people on the Game Boy Discord who are still fucking this up and I, I just don't understand it. Look at the battery. See that big plus there? That plus means this side is the positive, which is attached to this bar. Look at the cartridge. See that plus right there? That means that bar gets attached to this right here. So this goes like that. I just, I don't understand how people are still fucking this up. It's not that complicated. Ugh. With these button cell batteries, I mean, you, you can't always rely on the orientation of the tabs. Sometimes the tabs are on backwards compared to normal batteries. Okay, there we go. Now, good, it's not sticky. Try it out. Make sure it holds the save. Now we're good to go. Of course, it doesn't have my save from last time. We'll be a girl this time. And it is two twenty. Nice thing about using these uh, Pokemon Crystal carts is that it actually does have working real time clock hardware. So, might as well set it to the right time. And yes, I am up really late today. I can't help it. It's my weekend. This is like the fourth video I've made today. <laughs> this is probably going to be the first one I upload, and I don't know if I'm going to upload the rest right away or what. But, you know. Save the game. Excellent. So... Put this back together. So unfortunately, this has a broken shell. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to do something about this battery. It does not fit. All right, I'm gonna have to get some uh, 2025s or something. They usually fit, I swear. Maybe I'll just steal a battery out of my other cart. Oh, I stuck that right in the flux again. Damn it. Alright, well, let's try it out. I think we should be good. And there's my save, and it is indeed 221. Should be 22 now, but I didn't set this right at right when that rolled over. There it goes. Noise. Continue. Excellent. So I think I need to I don't know, maybe go buy some tab batteries tomorrow. If I can get some locally, I don't even know. Or maybe I'll see if I can get that to fit better. See if I can't solder it down closer to the PCB. But there you go. That's how you make another flash cart. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and take some pictures. 
I forgot to mention this earlier. I'm going to take some pictures and post some close-ups of what I did. Uh, when I was complaining about how there were too many uh, pins here, what I failed to realize at the time was that my particular chip has pins missing from it. Um, the, these chips that I'm working with right now are out of my salvage pile. I had to like straighten up or remove pins and stuff, but I don't know how well you can see that. Let me see if I can focus a little bit better. Yeah. You can see it lines up. There's an extra pin on both sides on this chip here. So centering it was a good idea. This one has the correct number of pins on this side, but it's missing two pins on this side. These particular chips, this is like TSOP 48 or whatever it is. On both sides here, there's one, two, and then one, oh, I'm not even in frame, dumbass. Uh, there's one, two pins, and then one, two pins on both sides. So there's four and eight total pins that are just not connected to anything. They're not used, they're just they're just there so that this is compatible with the TSOP48 form factor. They're not used for anything. That's it. So it doesn't matter if they're broken off or disconnected or shorted or bent. They're not used. In my case, they are completely missing and that is completely fine. This battery is as flush down as it can be. I don't know why it sticks up so much. I think it's because these tabs are backwards in comparison to normal batteries. But I don't know. I don't really think that makes that big of a difference. I don't know. Uh, either way, I'll have to figure something out before I ship this to the person who commissioned it. But, uh... Oh, and one more thing. i got to mention this because I know it's going to come up in the comments. Um, you guys are probably thinking, oh man, he ruined a nice Pokemon Crystal Cart. Well, this was the Japanese Crystal version. I don't know if you've seen prices on them lately. Yes, I know they have gone up. But they're only, what, like five, six bucks right now? Um, this was otherwise going to be completely unused. Uh... The Japanese version of the game, I mean, unless you understand the language, it's not very playable. Um, so I think this is in a much, much better condition now. Now that you can flash whatever the hell ROM you want. And uh, personally, I would do this to every Japanese crystal card if I could. But... I'm not going to. That's too much work. It's too expensive. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I gotta go edit this video, cue it for upload, and go to bed. Thanks for watching.